When did the first humans set foot on the vast shores of Australia? For decades, the archaeological sanctuary of Majid Bebe, with its ancient tools and hearths, whispered of human footsteps more than 65,000 years ago. But now, the voices we listen to may need adjustment, not from stone and ochre, but from strands of DNA. A groundbreaking genetic study is upending that long-held story. It turns out that Neanderthal genes, woven into every non-African genome, didn't spread into humanity until between 51,500 and 43,500 years ago. Since today's indigenous Australians carry that genetic signature, it means their ancestors could not have set foot in Australia before that time window. Suddenly, the origins of the first Australians may be more recent than we thought. This shift asks us to reconsider. Was Majibebe inhabited by an early human wave whose legacy vanished? Or might our arrival on this continent be closer in time and yet no less extraordinary than once believed? Let's explore. For decades, Australia has held a special place in the global story of human migration. Archaeologists point to the site of Majed Bebe in the Northern Territory, where stone tools, ochre, and hearths buried deep in the sediment have been dated to around 65,000 years ago. That discovery, published in Nature in 2017, shook the field. It suggested humans reached Australia far earlier than previously believed, pushing their journey across Southeast Asia back tens of thousands of years. Yet in 2025, a very different piece of evidence has emerged, this time not from soil or stone, but from the genetic record carried within every person alive today. A new wave of DNA studies has pinned down the timing of a critical event, the interbreeding between modern humans and Neanderthals. These encounters, researchers now argue with greater confidence, occurred between 50,000, 500, and 43,500 years ago. And because all non-African populations, including indigenous Australians, carry Neanderthal DNA, it means their ancestors could not have left Africa, crossed Asia, and reached Sahul, the combined landmass of ancient Australia and New Guinea, before this period. This creates a stark contradiction. On one hand, archaeology seems to point to human presence in Australia up to 65,000 years ago. On the other, genetics insists that the ancestors of today's Aboriginal Australians could not have arrived until at least 50,000 years ago. Which is right. Did Majid Bebe preserve traces of an early wave of humans whose genetic legacy vanished? Or are the archaeological dates, however carefully produced, less secure than they seem? This tension lies at the heart of one of the most important debates in human history. When did the very first Australians arrive, and who were they? Long before genetics entered the debate, archaeology was our main window into the first Australians. And at the center of that story stands Medjed Bebe, a rock shelter tucked into the Arnhem Land Escarpment of Northern Australia. To the local Mirar people, the site is part of a deep cultural landscape. To scientists, it has become the most contested piece of evidence in the timeline of human migration. Excavations at Mad Jed Bebe began in the 1970s, but it was only in recent decades that new dating methods transformed its significance. Researchers uncovered stone tools, edge-ground hatchets, grinding stones, and fragments of ochre used for painting, all buried in layers of sediment. Using optically stimulated luminescence dating, they argued that some of these artifacts were deposited as early as 65,000 years ago. If correct, that would make Majid Bebe the earliest evidence of modern humans anywhere outside Africa and the Middle East. The claim was revolutionary. It suggested that humans had mastered long sea crossings much earlier than expected, crossing from Southeast Asia to the supercontinent of Sahel at a time when sea levels were lower but still required open water voyages. It also placed Australia at the center of global discussions about how quickly humans spread across the planet. But the evidence has always carried a measure of uncertainty. Dating ancient sediments is complex, and critics argue that materials from deeper layers may have shifted downward over tens of thousands of years, creating an illusion of great antiquity. Others caution that while artifacts may indeed be that old, proving continuous human presence is far more difficult. Despite these debates, Majibebe became a touchstone for the narrative of Australia's first peoples. For years, it stood as the strongest archaeological argument that humans were living in northern Australia tens of millennia earlier than genetics or other migration models allowed. And yet, 
As new DNA studies suggest, this proud claim may not represent the direct ancestors of modern indigenous Australians at all. While archaeology deals in stones, bones, and sediments, genetics gives us a timeline written inside the human body itself. Every living non-African population today carries fragments of Neanderthal DNA, inherited from ancient encounters between our species and theirs. By estimating when this genetic exchange took place, researchers can set boundaries on when modern humans first spread into new parts of the world. Recent genomic studies have refined this window with greater precision. In 2025, researchers argued that Neanderthal admixture must have occurred between 51,500 and 43,500 years ago. That means that any human population living outside Africa before this period could not have left a genetic legacy in today's world because the shared Neanderthal signature is absent from their DNA. Indigenous Australians, like all non-African groups, carry these Neanderthal markers. The implication is profound. Their ancestors must have migrated through Eurasia after these interbreeding events, not before. In other words, the genetic record places the earliest possible arrival of today's Aboriginal Australians in Sahul no earlier than 50,000 years ago. This finding challenges the archaeological interpretation of sites like Majed Bebe. If artifacts dated to 65,000 years truly represent human activity, it suggests that those early settlers may have belonged to a wave of migration that left no descendants among modern populations. They might have been replaced, absorbed, or vanished without a genetic trace. For years, the story of Australia's first peoples rested on tools and hearths. Now, DNA is forcing a re-examination. The genetic clock may not be perfect, but it provides an independent line of evidence that human arrival could be thousands of years later than once believed. At first glance, the archaeological and genetic records appear to be in open conflict. On one side, the layers of Majed Bebe and other sites point to a human presence stretching back to around 65,000 years ago. On the other, genetic evidence insists that the ancestors of today's indigenous Australians could not have arrived until after 50,000 years ago. So, how can these timelines be reconciled? One possibility is that Majed Bebe represents an earlier migration wave, a group of modern humans who reached northern Australia tens of thousands of years before the ancestors of today's Aboriginal peoples. If true, these pioneers may have lived for generations, but ultimately left no surviving descendants. Their genetic line could have been replaced by later arrivals who carried the Neanderthal markers now seen in all living non-African groups. Archaeologists sometimes call such populations ghost populations, leaving behind material culture but no genetic legacy. Another explanation is that the dating of archaeological layers is not as straightforward as it seems. Sediments can be disturbed by water, animals, or natural movements over millennia, which may cause artifacts from later periods to sink deeper into older layers. While the dating of Majed Bebe has been defended by its researchers, some scholars remain cautious, noting that the uncertainties in sediment dating leave room for interpretation. It's also possible that both records hold part of the truth. Perhaps humans did arrive in Sahul closer to 65,000 years ago but the genetic data we see today only reflects the descendants of a later migration, around or after 50,000 years ago. In that case, archaeology would be recording the first human presence, while genetics reveals which lineages ultimately endured. What is certain is that neither line of evidence can be dismissed. Archaeology provides tangible proof of human behavior, while genetics preserves a molecular history of ancestry. Reconciling the two is less about proving one wrong and more about understanding the complexity of human migration, where waves of people, some surviving, some vanishing, all contributed to the story. Across the scientific community, there is growing recognition that the story of the first Australians cannot be told from a single line of evidence. Archaeologists point to sites like Majed Bebe, Lake Mungo, and others as proof of human activity stretching deep into the past. Geneticists, however, place the surviving ancestry of Aboriginal Australians within a narrower time frame, likely between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago. This overlap, while narrower than the earliest archaeological claims, still makes Australia one of the earliest regions outside Africa to be permanently settled by modern humans. Even if Majid Bebe's oldest layers represent a different migration wave, 
The consensus is that by at least 50,000 years ago, humans had successfully established themselves across the continent. Sites along the Eyre Peninsula, at Crane Brook in New South Wales, and at Lake Mungo in western New South Wales all support this time frame, showing stone tools, hearths, and even some of the earliest evidence of ritual burial anywhere in the world. Lake Mungo in particular is a striking example. Human remains discovered there, known as Mungo Lady and Mungo Man, date to around 40,000 years ago. These burials reveal not only the antiquity of human presence, but also the development of complex cultural practices, including cremation and ceremonial burial, long before such traditions appear in many other parts of the world. What this suggests is that while the precise date of first arrival remains contested, the broader outline is clear. By 50,000 years ago, humans were firmly rooted in Sahul, spreading into diverse environments from tropical coasts to arid deserts. This makes Aboriginal Australians custodians of one of the oldest continuous cultural traditions on Earth. The debate, then, is not about whether Australia was settled early. It unquestionably was. Instead, the focus has shifted to how early, and whether earlier, occupation layers represent a lost chapter of humanity or a misreading of the archaeological record. In either case, the enduring presence of indigenous Australians reflects a remarkable survival and adaptation story stretching back tens of millennia. Reconstructing how the first Australians arrived requires us to step back and imagine a very different world. During the late Pleistocene, when sea levels were lower, the vast landmass of Sahul joined Australia with New Guinea and Tasmania. To the northwest lay Sunda, a continental shelf linking much of Southeast Asia. Between them, stretched dozens of islands and at least 60 to 90 kilometers of open water. Crossing this distance demanded more than luck. It required planning, seafaring skill, and cooperation. Most migration models favor a southern coastal route in which groups move through what is now Indonesia, island hopping across the lesser Sunda Islands before reaching the Timor region and then sailing southward into northern Australia. Alternative models suggest a more northern route via Sulawesi and New Guinea. Whichever path was taken, the journey represents one of the earliest instances of intentional ocean voyaging anywhere in the world. Technological innovation was critical to this achievement. The archaeological record hints that humans at this time already had sophisticated toolkits, grinding stones, hafted axes, and pigments used for symbolic expression. These same skills likely extended to boat building, rope making, and navigation. While no Pleistocene watercraft have survived, the successful settlement of Sahul is itself the strongest evidence that seafaring technology was well established tens of thousands of years ago. Some researchers argue that such a crossing could have been accidental. Perhaps a storm swept groups across open seas. But computer simulations suggest that successful migration would have required deliberate voyages with enough people transported to establish viable communities. This implies not a single chance event, but repeated crossings over time. Once in Sahol, these pioneers encountered new landscapes unlike anything they had seen before. Giant marsupials, vast deserts, and unfamiliar ecosystems. Their ability to adapt rapidly to these environments speaks to the resilience and ingenuity of early humans. Whether they first set foot here 65,000 years ago or closer to 50,000, their arrival marks a turning point in human history, proof that our species had mastered not only land, but sea. The story of Australia's first settlers is not an isolated chapter. It is part of a much larger narrative about how humans spread across the globe. If Aboriginal ancestors reached Sahul around 50,000 years ago, this places them among the earliest explorers of new continents, alongside those who entered Europe and East Asia during the same period. This revised timeline also reframes how we view the speed of human dispersal. Within just a few thousand years of leaving Africa, our species had not only crossed vast stretches of Eurasia, but had also built the maritime skills necessary to traverse open seas. The arrival in Sahul stands as evidence that early humans were more adaptable and technologically capable than once assumed. The implications extend beyond migration. Archaeological evidence from Lake Mungo and other sites shows that by 40,000 years ago, Aboriginal Australians were practicing symbolic rituals using pigments and shaping landscapes through controlled burning. 
These behaviors reveal a society deeply engaged with its environment, one that adapted quickly to the diverse and often harsh ecologies of the continent. Globally, the Australian case forces scholars to reconsider the relationship between archaeological signals and genetic lineages. If sites like Majid Bebe represent a population that left no genetic descendants, it means human history was shaped by repeated movements, failed experiments, and overlapping migrations, not a single linear journey. Such complexity is echoed elsewhere. In Europe, early modern human populations were sometimes replaced by later waves. In East Asia, genetic continuity and turnover also intersect. In this sense, Australia provides a mirror for the human story everywhere. The continent's settlement illustrates both the extraordinary reach of Homo sapiens and the fragility of early migrations. Some groups endured, leaving an unbroken cultural lineage that survives today among indigenous Australians. Others, if they existed, vanished without trace, except for the artifacts buried in stone and soil. Thus, the debate over dates is not only about when people arrived, but also about what it means for our understanding of humanity's expansion, resilience, and diversity. The question of when the first Australians arrived remains one of the most fascinating debates in archaeology and genetics. For decades, the site of Majid Bebe seemed to place human footsteps on the continent as early as 65,000 years ago. But new DNA research, anchored in the timing of Neanderthal admixture, now suggests that the direct ancestors of today's indigenous Australians could not have reached Sahul until after 50,000 years ago. This apparent contradiction does not diminish the achievement of those early settlers. Whether they arrived 65 or 50,000 years ago, their journey demanded one of the earliest ocean crossings in human history. Their descendants adapted to landscapes ranging from lush coasts to arid deserts, creating knowledge systems, cultural traditions, and stories that have endured longer than almost any other on Earth. What the debate truly highlights is the complexity of human migration. Populations may have arrived in waves, some leaving lasting legacies, others disappearing without a genetic trace. Archaeology and genetics are not enemies in this inquiry, but partners, each providing a different perspective on the same human journey. For indigenous Australians, this is not merely a question of dates, but of continuity and connection. Their presence on the land represents the world's oldest continuous cultural tradition, linking past to present in ways that science is only beginning to understand. The final word on when the very first Australians arrived may not yet be written, but what is clear is that their story reshapes our understanding of humanity itself. A tale of endurance, innovation, and belonging, stretching back tens of thousands of years into the deep past.